All right, this is number six from the 2010 AP Physics B exam, and we're looking at an electromagnetic induction problem. We've got this cart with a loop, given dimensions, traveling into a magnetic field of two Tesla, uh, and through various stages we want to look at various information. So part A, we want to indicate the direction of the loop when its front edge is at 0.12 meters. It's actually really important to pay attention to that number, uh, because the whole thing is 0.2 meters long, so if I were to try to replicate this, and I take this car and I drive it in, when its front edge is at the 0.12 meter mark, I'm going to lock this down actually, when it's at the 0.12 meter mark, that means it's partially in the field and partially out of the field. And as it continues the travel to the right, it will continue to get in the field. So at that instant, it is experiencing a changing magnetic flux. And remember that when a loop experiences an increase in the change in magnetic flux, it will create its own flux to oppose the direction. If it's experiencing a decrease, it'll create its own flux to be in the same direction. In this example is experiencing an increase in flux. So it will create its own field to oppose the original field. Well, the original field is represented by these x's, which means it's into the page, which means the loop will create its own field so it's out of the page. That's just one part of the battle. Now we need to know what, what direction the induced flux is. You're going to use right-hand rule for that, and that rule is the one in which you take your thumb again for your right hand, and you point it in the direction of the magnetic field created by the loop, and then your fingers will kind of wrap around in the direction the current would flow, either clockwise or counterclockwise, if you're staring at your thumb. So for this one, take your thumb, your right hand, your thumb, point it straight at your face, and you'll see your fingers will curve in a counterclockwise direction. There's other rules that you could follow, other tactics that you can use to learn that. I think that's the easiest. You're going to get a counterclockwise induction of current. That's how you're going to justify it, too. B, when the front edge of the loop is at the 0.112 mark, we know its speed is 3 meters per second. We want to know at that instant the induced current and then the net force in the loop. Well, the induced current, we can only figure it out if we know the induced potential. So we need to first figure out the electric potential created in this loop. That's the EMF business. And the EMF you can figure out is change in flux over time. Um, we can derive the equation I'm about to use, or you can recall this equation. That's what I prefer in this case. This is that moving conducting rod equation. EMF is equal to B. L, V, with B being the magnetic field, L being the length of the wire completely exposed to the field, V being the velocity of the loop. So for that, we're going to use our two Tesla. The L that we're going to use is the portion of the wire completely engrossed in the field, so it's that 0.1 meters. And the velocity is given 3 meters per second. This is simply just the electric potential, or the voltage that will get created. It's going to be 6 times 0.1, so 0 0.6 volts. Now the current, if we look at Ohm's law, I will be the voltage over the resistance. Well, we just figured out the voltage is 0.6 volts. The resistance was given 4 ohms. And we're going to get 0 0.15 amps of current. That is the answer to B1. Now that we know the current, we can determine the force in the loop because the force on any current carrying wire in an external magnetic field is ILB. Now we do need to multiply this by some trig if the orientation is not perfectly perpendicular, but you'll notice that it is perfectly perpendicular, so I think it's okay to leave off the sine theta. I'm going to toss sine theta in here anyhow and show that sine of 90 is 1, so we will trim it out. The current is the value that I just grabbed, 0.15 amps. The length is, once again, that portion exposed to the field. So this could be the 0.1 meters, and then the field is still 2 Tesla. We are going to go ahead and get an answer of 0.03 newtons.
that is the force acting on this wire. Finally, at a later point in time, the cart and loop are completely inside the field. We want to now determine the net force and loop at that time, and of course, we do need to justify. And so let's take a look at that now. We are completely submerged in the field, cruising along at a nice constant speed. And we want to think about, well, what is the force and current induced in this? Well, there's going to be none. There will be no force acting in the loop because there's no current in the loop. There's no current in the loop because the loop is not detecting a changing magnetic flux. Whilst it is detecting flux, it's not changing. The amount of field lines going through that loop face will be constant the entire time, so long as it continues to travel within the fully submerged field and at constant speed and constant area, which it is. So, that is the answer. That is legitimate justification as well. You might want to toss in some an equation in there, uh, but really, ultimately, you need to directly state there is no changing magnetic flux, thus there is no induced current, thus there is no force acting on it because the current is zero. All right, that's it for number six. Thank you.